wine friends and happy wine wednesday if you are new i'm ali from a glass after work thanks for joining so today i am going to share with you an italian wine that has become literally our house white it is 16 dollars on wine.com is imported by kermit lynch who is literally one of my favorite importers. I have never had a wine that Kermit has imported that I haven't absolutely loved. Um, he mostly only imports uh, Italian and French wines, but he's gotten so much recognition and has been so important in the wine world that it actually will say on the front of the label that the wine is imported by Kermit Lynch. So I love his wines. He finds absolute gems very often at really good prices. And this wine is absolutely no exception. I'm just grateful that so many of the winemakers in the Piedmont region have decided to go back to their uh, local grapes, their more traditional grapes like the Arneas because it is, just, it is just delicious. Trust me on this, you need to try one. I'd love to know, let me know in the comments down below, is this a new grape to you? Have you ever heard of it before? And if you've had one, also let me know what that is because I would love to know what it is. So with that, why don't we talk very, very briefly about the winery itself and then we'll dig right on into the wine. So the whole story of the wine estate started when a Frenchman, uh, Pierre Tianto, walked by this estate, um, saw it, uh, started doing some odd jobs around the, the place. This is back in the 1900, I believe. And there was a widow who lived there, so she needed, she needed some help with, with, you know, doing chores around the place. About two years later, they got married because they fell in love. They had um, some luck making wine in that they were able to bottle their first vintage in 1914, but unfortunately, the first <laughs> clearly i'm outside so my apologies <laughs> um the between the cicadas and the sirens sometimes it gets to be a little much around here <laughs> um so they were luckily they were able to bottle their first vintage in 1914 but unfortunately that happened right before the war broke out and so that obviously uh hampered things a little bit um for them but eventually they were able to get back to winemaking and back to bottling their wines. They had two sons, uh, both of whom took over the, the estate from them. And then the one son, Carlos, his son, El Elvio, I believe that's how you pronounce it, he then took over. So that's by that point, the grandson. Um, Elvio really focused on getting back to these more traditional grapes, like, like a, you know, a more traditional way of doing things. And most of what they focus on, honestly, is Moscato and some fizzy Moscato and, and that sort of wine, which is, doesn't tend to be my favorite, um, you know, my favorite style. However, he went back to trying to tap into that. And so, um, Part of that then also leads to the Ar Arnis, and um, now he, Elvio, has stepped back, and uh, his son and his son's wife are now the ones who run the, the estate. So I thought that that was really interesting. We're now into, you know, what, fourth, fourth generation of family running the wine estate, and the wines, the wine that I've tasted is just absolutely beautiful. So. Now that we've heard the story of the winery, I know we're ready to dig right on in, right? And of course, it wouldn't be in a glass after work wine video if I didn't share this week's Simply Charmed uh, wine charm. I'm using the cork. Um, it says wine cellar on it from the Napa Valley collection. All right, so here we go. It is a screw top. So you know that when I figured out that this wine was a screw top, that I was already going to be biased to love it. As I mentioned, it is $16, so it's also in a good everyday price range, which also makes it really nice. And then, here we go. All right. So look at that color. It is actually, I will say, it is a pretty, it is pretty deep um, lemon yellow color. It, it's, it's very clear, it's very pretty but it's definitely very kind of full colored. 
Oh, and hello pears. Wow, that is some juicy pears on there. Also getting some nectarines and some white peaches. Oh, but it is just like all pears. Um, also maybe a little bit of yellow apple and a little bit of creaminess. There's definitely some like creamy custard smell to it. it smells so good. All right, uh, why don't we give it a taste? Cheers. All right, you already knew I was gonna love it because I told you that this has now become our summer house white, but holy cow, do I love this wine. Um, it has got really nice, really good acidity, but with a little bit of heft in the body, which I really, really enjoy. So I would say it's more in the light to medium bodied range, really bright acidity, but well balanced um, so that it's not like I'm like salivating thinking, oh my God, I need to drink more immediately. I have enough time to let everything linger in, in my mouth, which I really, really enjoy. Speaking of, I'll take another sip. All right, so still, it is like all pears all the time. It's, they're just juicy, bright pears, and definitely some of that golden delicious apple. Getting a little less of the stone fruit flavors, but still some like white peach, white nectarine um, notes. There's also a lovely minerality to all of it. I think that that's part of what helps, keeps it kind of bright and fresh, um, but still there are some hint of creamy notes underneath, which I, which I really do enjoy. So this is a wine since during the summer we're eating a lot of seafood. We're also eating a lot of kind of salad with um, barbecue chicken. I usually use a Caesar dressing. This goes really, really well with a Caesar dressing. Uh, and I think also it would go really nicely. We haven't done this, but with like a white pizza or something along those lines. Uh, definitely on the lighter end of the flavors, but at the same time, it can actually hold up to some good food. We are getting some halibut from a local fish market from Chesapeake Smokehouse, and that's getting delivered. I have several bottles of this left inside, so I'm pretty sure we'll end up opening one of these bottles with that. Grilling that halibut, especially with maybe even with a little bit of Old Bay seasoning, putting it with this wine, it. I think it might actually be really, really nice. I'll have to check back. Maybe I'll mention it on Instagram. So if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know how that goes. So um, I think that that's everything. Don't forget, remember to let me know if you've ever heard of the Arnest grape. And if you have, and you've had any wines that are made with it that you've really enjoyed, let me know down in those comments below. I'd love to know. And that is everything I have to share today. So if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I really do appreciate those. If you aren't already a subscriber, you can click on the icon right there or on the subscribe button down below. But don't forget, also click on that bell because it will notify you when I upload a new video, which is gonna be every Wine Wednesday. And if you're looking for a recommendation, you can find one right there. Thanks for joining and I hope you're staying safe and healthy. Happy Wine Wednesday. Cheers.